second in this cut here you have the president making a very uh simplistic mistake that a lot of people make in that believing that technology destroys jobs that be, when you come up with a labor saving device that that in and of itself hurts job opportunities that somehow capitalism by coming up with you know more ingenuity more ingenious ways of making things labor saving devices that it's bad uh, for the middle class because it destroys jobs. And he actually gives some examples of the bad things that capitalism has done in the past. Here, uh, let's listen to cut number seven. Steel mills that needed 100 or 1,000 employees are now able to do the same work with 100 employees. So layoffs too often became permanent, not just a temporary part of the business cycle. And these changes didn't just affect blue-collar workers. If you were a bank teller or a phone operator or a travel agent, you saw many in your profession replaced by ATMs and the Internet. So the president is saying that these are bad things, that it would be better if we didn't have ATM machines, if we had to go back and stand in lines uh, at a bank that might only be open uh, from 10 to 3, uh, because we, we saved, we preserved the job of the tellers. Is he saying that it would be better if we still needed a thousand people to do the work that a hundred people can do now? Is that what the president really believes? Does he really believe that all the progress of industrialization was bad because it meant that somebody had to lose their jobs? Look, every time you have a labor saving device, by definition, somebody loses a job because you have saved on labor but that is what enables lower prices the fact that we can produce things with fewer people means that the price of those things come down and therefore more people can afford to buy them that is the beauty of it think about it this way we could create a lot of jobs in the construction industry if we outlawed bulldozers what if all the people digging with bulldozers had to use shovels clearly a lot more people would have to dig with shovels uh, than with a bulldozer so we would create a lot of jobs but you know what how many people uh, do shovels put out of work because after all if there were no shovels what if people had to dig with their bare hands they didn't even have shovels you know think of how many jobs we could create in construction if everybody had to dig with their bare hands well, we might create some construction jobs. Actually, we might not because it would be so expensive to build a house that far fewer houses would actually be built. So we might actually have fewer people working in construction if they had to dig by hand. But of course, all the people that had to dig by hand would have to stop doing something else. And so whatever they had to stop doing so they can get in a ditch and dig with their hands, uh, well, something else wouldn't get produced. See, when President Obama says that when a factory that used to need 100 people a thousand people now only needs a hundred. He says that those 900 jobs are permanently lost. They're not lost. They're freed up. The labor is freed up to do something else. I mean, what if we can, what if the factories can work with no people? That's even better. Now we, now everybody can do something else and nobody has to work in that factory. In fact, if you take it to its logical conclusion, what if nobody had to work at all? What if we could have all the goods that we need, all the consumer goods, without anybody having to work at all? Well, that would be the best of all worlds, right? We'd all have nothing but leisure. If we could find a way to have computers and machines do everything for us, that would be the best situation. And be, but any, any, any progress we make to that point represents a big improvement in our lives. And the people who are helped the most by this process are uh, the middle class, are the poor, not the rich. I mean, think about music. I don't know if I've given this analogy before, but at one point in time, if you wanted to listen to music, you had a, you know, you needed to afford an orchestra or a band. I mean, there was no phonograph. There were no CD players. Uh, you know, you actually had to play the music uh, yourself or, you know, had to hire uh, somebody to come or a piano player. The rich people can afford that. I mean, the kings, they never had a problem having entertainment in their house. They had a whole bunch of people that would come and entertain them. Uh, but the middle class had very little in the way of entertainment. It was automation. It was the ability uh, to simply have a phonograph that would play a record. That's what brought music into the homes 
of of the of the middle class. And of course, these this was labor saving devices, bringing the cost down. The rich people will always be able to have stuff. It's 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 the middle class and the poor that benefits the most from the very process that Obama is trying to criticize. Anyway, let me continue with more on his speech and, and outsourcing. Here's cut number eight. Today, even higher skilled jobs like accountants and middle management can be outsourced to countries like China or India. And if you're somebody whose job can be done cheaper by a computer or someone in another country, you don't have a lot of leverage with your employer when it comes to asking for better wages or better benefits, especially since fewer Americans today are part of a union. Now, of course, the irony of it is one of the reasons that so many jobs are outsourced is because the employers want to escape those unions. It's the unions that are in large part responsible for the the trend in outsourcing. And the other part is the government itself. Yes, President Obama is correct. Companies are trying to outsource their labor to other countries. That is the natural consequence of all the anti-business rules and regulations that Congress has been passing over the years. Congress has made it too expensive and too risky for Americans to hire Americans. So they hire foreigners instead. These are the unintended consequences. But the enemy of the American worker is not the employer who is employing foreigners. It is the U.S. government who has forced that choice. Because remember, a businessman doesn't owe anybody a job. If you own a business, you're trying to make money for yourself. The fact that you have to hire people to make money is is a is a is a beneficial consequence of your own self-interest and your own pursuit. But you are not required to do that. You are running a business for yourself. And if you can make the most money for yourself by hiring foreigners, that is exactly what you should do. The problem is why is that? Why is it that it's cheaper to hire foreigners than Americans when at one point it used to be a lot cheaper to hire Americans than foreigners, even though Americans were paid a lot more? And the reason that it's now so is so popular uh, to hire foreigners is because of government and labor unions. That is the problem. More labor unions and more government isn't going to solve the problem. It's simply going to make it worse. 